Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Byron Pace and Scott McKenzie are tracking down a red stag with a South African PH on the Isle of Skye. Plus, new clay shooting editor Hugh Hopkins reviews the Brownlin Ultra XT. A year after our last visit, we're back hunting on Sky, and we've got a guest, professional hunter, dear fan of Winterberg Safaris, last seen guiding us on an African plains game hunt. Now he's behind the rifle, with Scott McKenzie as the guide and Byron Pace manning the camera. This is dear fan's first Scottish stag stalk, and things are already looking promising. As we near the hunting area, we spot several stags holding position on the tops. Is that the big one on top? Yeah. You've got one coming in now at the bottom yeah and there's one coming up the gully you hear that dear fun yeah it's roaring yeah you can see his mouth opening already. i think what we'll do is we'll we'll stick to the plan we'll head up into the colivore and we'll spy out there this group are, are moving across anyway so we can just uh We'll let them do their thing. Are we'll you going to try and stalk their place? Well, we can come in. We'll have a look what's up further in the glen. And then, if, if there's nothing out there that's uh, suitable for taking, we'll move in and have a look at uh, this group uh, up on the hill there. We load up and get ready to leave the vehicle. Scott prepares the Argo, which will take us a short distance onto the hill and hopefully assist with carcass extraction later. We want to give Deerfan the real Scottish experience, so we're soon heading our way up on foot. This is no easy ascent, and the going is slow, but the effort pays off when we reach the ridge. Immediately we spy a hind, which means there'll be a stag not far off. Right on cue it wanders into view, though it's not one we want to take. It looks quite a, quite a fine animal. We've got plenty of options in the immediate area anyway. That's three, three beasts in this, this side of the glen. See where everything is, he may have moved. But then we'll just keep going, it'll be the hinds that, we'll, like I say, we need, need to keep it for. We stalk on, still gaining altitude. Before long, Scott is signalling to Deerfan to get behind cover and stay low. There could be a shot on up ahead. We're going to be skylined wherever we are on this point, but at least we can have some of that help behind us.
Scott stalks ahead and signals back that all is well. Now Dear Fan can make his approach with the Ruger rifle. We're right on the tops now and there's nothing to break up our outlines, so this will be a crucial crawl if the Ruger American is to come into play. With Deer Fan in position, we wait for the targeted stag to stand and offer a shot, which it steadfastly refuses to do. Scott tries to influence matters by calling, but the stag decides to stay put. This goes on for half an hour with the stag showing little interest in Scott's roars. Finally it stands up but then immediately turns head on, still offering no ethical shot. With Deerfan staying patient behind the rifle he's at last rewarded for his efforts as the beast turns broadside. Scott gives the order to shoot. The Gecko soft point does its job thanks to some straight shooting from Deer Fan. Technically dead on its hooves, the stag sways a little, moves, waits and then drops. This was a poor stag and a good one to remove, leaving his ladies for a stag with more suitable DNA. After we confirmed death, we asked Deerfan what his first red stag experience was like. The hand itself was like waiting for a big, big kudu bull to come out. Waiting for it and sitting and waiting and doesn't come out. And eventually it comes out. The roaring was magnificent. It's something, really something else. And uh, this is the closest you've ever hunted to the sea? I've never hunted this close to the sea. <laughs> <laughs> It is beautiful, it is really beautiful there. Yeah. At this time of year during the rut, is, you know, we're still looking for any animals that are potentially you know, older, weaker, not going to make it through the winter. That's always the first selection that we, you know, we're, we're looking for, that's to fill, fill the cold criteria. But then you, know, you, you start working your way through the age groups. You know, this, is a, this is a good beast, he's a good animal. We've got a few of this age group and uh, of this quality so we can you know we can start to thin a few of those out now uh there was a bigger stag up behind him that really would have uh, you know would do better covering the height the, the few hinds that this animal had scott puts his knife knowledge to the test with a swift field gralic it's all done by the book and soon the stag is ready for a drag out Everything look good, Scott? Yeah, everything's fine. Nothing come toward there. Reds are weighty animals, and the drag is an unenviable task, but that's why we brought the Argo. Scott hauls the beast to the nearest suitable location, and we're ready to load up. Job done, we head back to the larder to complete the knife work. Scott and Deerfan can both be happy with their efforts, rewarded with Deerfan's first ever red stag. And there's more in stone for Deerfan and Sky yet. Watch it soon on The Shooting Show. Deerfan there, proven he can do the business with deer as well as antelope. And now, The Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News, brought to you by gunbed.co.uk. The police have cancelled their plans to set up a dedicated Crime Stoppers hotline for members of the public to report firearms owners. 
The phone line was announced as part of new measures to increase security, including unannounced home visits on shooters. But the phone line was criticised roundly and became known as the Shopper Shooter Hotline. After meeting shooting organisations to discuss the subject, ACPO announced it would end the use of the dedicated number. Basque described this as a common-sense decision. New tracking data on hen harriers has been released, but shooting organisations say no meaningful conclusions can be drawn. Of 47 hen harriers tagged by Natural England, only 10 are still located today. The transmission was lost for the other 37. There are many reasons a transmission can be lost, including transmitter failure and battery life. Natural England said it knew of three instances where birds were seen alive after their tags stopped transmitting. Britain's Olympic gold medalist Peter Wilson has retired from competitive shooting. The 28-year-old said that since winning the double trap gold in London two years ago, he had struggled to find an incentive to compete. He is now set to focus on training promising young shooters and supporting shooting sports in the media. Great Britain's 2016 medal hopes now rest on British shooting's three podium-class athletes, Ed Ling, Elena Allen and Steve Scott. This year's grouse season is being hailed as one of the best in living memory. With a month to go in the season, Scottish sporting agency Sporting Letts has predicted a record overall count of grouse shot and millions of pounds generated for the Scottish economy. Summer states reported early season days of nearly 300 brace, with backs of more than 100 brace not uncommon across the Scottish moors. For more like this, don't miss Modern Gamekeeping magazine. And finally, the Beretta world is on the move for 2015. Next year, the event will take place at the West Midlands Shooting Ground in Hodnet. The ground already hosts the Benelli Sporto, among many other major championships. The format will remain the same, 120 targets shot over 15 stands. Save the dates now, the 3rd to the 5th of July 2015. That was the Shooting Show News. Hi, I'm Hugh Hopkins and we're at Honesbury Shooting School today where we are checking out the Browning Ultra XT AC HR. So let me talk you through just what I've said there. The Ultra XT AC HR. The T stands for trap gun and you can tell it's a trap gun by this uh, smart beaver tail end there and it's all up weight, comes to just over nine pounds, which is quite heavy. You wouldn't want to be walking this around a sporting or a game shooting day. Now the AC stands for adjustable comb. You can see I've raised it slightly here today uh, to help me acquire these going away trap targets that we've been shooting. And the HR stands for high rib. Now compared to some shotguns you'll see in ISSF shooting competitions, this is actually reasonably low. Uh, you'll see some on Parazzi's and Berettas which are quite substantially higher, but this is a modest 10.3 millimeter, which is a lot higher than game and sporter guns, but it is very good for acquiring those trap targets. So who is this gun for? Well, it's obviously a trap gun as I've mentioned, um, and it's ideal for domestic and international trap shooting competitions. It's all up weight, you know, it's quite substantial. It's going to be ready to absorb a lot of recoil from a lot of cartridges, perhaps a thousand cartridges in one week in a major competition. Now at this shooting school today, I've been shooting quite light 21 gram loads um, and the perceived recoil has been nothing. But if I were shooting in a competition and wanted to go up to 28 grams, then I think it would be quite manageable. If we take a closer look at the muzzle end here, the barrels are actually bored to 18.7 millimeters, which is slightly wider than the standard 12 bore, which is about 18.4, 18.5 millimeters. Now Browning have said that they believe this is the best bore for pattern distribution and it reduces perceived recoil. So once again, everything has been set up to allow shooters to compete in those big competitions. Staying at the muzzle end, this gun was actually supplied with five Midas Invector Plus interchangeable chokes and both barrels can accept interchangeable chokes. This is a subtle way that Browning is saying they're adapting to the modern game of play shooting. Originally trap guns were fixed choke, then boring the bottom barrel became common practice and this completes the transition. And with this gun, mod or imp mod should be good enough for first and second barrel kills. Now getting back to the aesthetics of the gun, you can see here that there's some fine walnut on the stock and the fore end there uh, with some tight checkering 
Now, I will admit that there is a right-hand palm swell on this particular gun, but the stock is quite a neutral cast, so I've been able to shoot it with great comfort. Another notable feature is the choice of triggers. Um, there's three in the pack there. Um, I've opted to go for the wide curved option. Uh, there is also a slim one available and uh, a checkered one for that extra bit of grip. You can also choose between three different coloured fibre optic beads at the end to help you find the target. And of course we can't leave without making a quick note of the robust and reliable Browning action. Uh, it's been around since about 1925 and changed very little since then. With its full width hinge pin it is one of the most successful over and under designs of the past hundred years. Now, this shotgun adds another chapter to the Browning story, which is a long one um, and a very successful one. They became well loved in Britain after Bob Braithwaite won uh, Olympic trap gold uh, at the Mexico Games with his Browning C3. Now, little has changed in terms of the action, but there are modern subtle differences that mean that it's usable in today's clay shooting competitions. And at this price point, £2,625, it's a high quality mid-range shotgun. You can put it up there with the Caesar Greeny Challenger and also Beretta 692s and it, it would compete well. Um, you might not see many of them winning ISSF competitions, but certainly on the domestic trap shooting market uh, you'll see plenty of these and uh, they do very well there. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you.